Everyone, welcome to Ask the Experts. Um, today our topic is Google. Um, Amanda is going to cover Google Drives and Google Docs, um, and Jennifer is going to cover Google Forms. Um, if you have any questions at all during the presentation, please throw those questions in the chat or feel free to um, raise your hand or whatever, um, and we'll answer those questions. Um, I believe Amanda is going to go first. Um, Amanda is our the director of operations at Tech Lab. Um, she's been an employee of Tech Lab since 2013. She has her master's of education in instructional technology. Um, and for Tech Lab, Amanda does business development, sales, and marketing. Amanda, would you like to take it away? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to uh, discuss, as Michelle said today, Google Drive and Google Docs. Um, how many of you guys have a Google account in any fashion, whether it's personal or whether it's for work? Okay, so it looks like most of us have at least some access to Google. Okay, and as Michelle said, and, and Jennifer alluded to earlier as well, if you have any questions uh, for us, feel free to put them in the chat and we will make sure we cover it. We just wanna make sure too that we're covering what you guys are kind of looking for. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and walk you through these programs. And I believe it's this one. Okay, so what this is, is Google Drive that I have up. And how you get here is there are the little um, nine boxes in the corner and you're gonna go to those and then you're gonna click on Drive. And as long as you're signed into your Google account, it will open your Drive for you, okay? Um, also, if you have more than one Google account, Google has now made it so that you can log into a couple Google accounts at the same time, which is fantastic. So just something to keep in mind if you have more than one and you don't have to sign in and out of them anymore. So, okay, once you're click on that drive, and again, it's that symbol with the, the triangle and the three colors. Um, this is the area where you can store pretty much anything that you want to, want to keep and want to be able to have access to. So when you have it stored on your Google Drive, you can access it from any computer that you're logged into your Google on. You can also access it on your phone. Um, in my phone, there we go, your phone. Um, you can access it on tablets. You can access it on multiple computers as long as you log into your Google Drive on that device. So the first overall view is um, your drive has anything that you have saved yourself personally. Um, then going down the list, shared with me, um, this is a Ask the Experts thing that Jennifer had shared with us. And so I have that in the shared with me. So anything that somebody else will share with you shows up in that tab for the shared with me. Um, and then they kind of highlight the items that you have worked with the most recently. So when you, if you know that you've worked on something recently, um, you can pull those up. And then um, start would be like your favorites. If you wanna star something to find it pretty quick, you can do that. If you put things into trash, their cut will be in the trash there. Um, and you can decide to empty the trash just like you would in like your email account. And then on the, on the left hand side, underneath that, it tells you how much of your space you have used of your free 15 gigabytes if you have a not paid account. If you have an account through your work, you may have more space than that, but in general, they give you about 15 gigabytes if for some reason you max that out and you want to buy more storage, they of course make it convenient and easy for you to do that. Um, it's usually around $2 a month and then it goes up to about 100 gigabytes. So that is an option, um, but there's other options too as we've discussed in some previous um, sessions on how to back up and where to buy space from. So um, then this new button in the upper um, corner here, what you can do is you can make folders and then you can put your items into folders. So I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it Ask the Experts. Okay, so it created a new folder for me. And so I can go into that folder. And the cool thing about Google is that you can collaborate. Collaboration is a big thing within the, the, um, within the Google itself. And so I can share that folder and I may need assistance doing that. I can share that folder with other people. There we go, share. So you click on the name of the folder and then you click um, share at the top. And I want to save it, or I'm gonna share it with Michelle. 
and she comes up easy for me. So I'm just going to hit send. And now anything that I put into that folder is automatically shared with Michelle. So this is great when you're working on projects together with somebody. Um, Jennifer has mentioned that she uses this a lot when she's working on collaborating on anything with other companies or other individuals. Um, personally, my husband and I have several folders that we can share. Um, so like we keep our Christmas lists or our address book on our Google Drive and we have it shared so that we can access it at any time. So if you're looking for a way to use it personally, that's kind of a, a fun way to, to use it. So there's different things or like my husband created a folder and uploaded a bunch of documents and said, please review these for me. And so, you know, you can share folders and put whatever you want into that folder. And then just know that because the folder itself is shared, anybody who has access to the folder will be able to see anything that you put into it, okay? So going back to your drive, um, as you can see, you've got folders here. And then your quick access is again, kind of like your most recent documents. And, um, Let's see, your other button that you kind of need to know quick is in your new, you can make folders. I just described that. You can upload fold files and you can upload whole folders. So if you already have things on your computer that you want to have access to in other locations, you can just upload them to Google Drive. So I've done this again personally with my um, business documents that I want saved elsewhere. Um, I will have them saved on a computer, but I'm like, oh, I need to access them in another Place. And so I upload them to Google Drive. Um, I just click file upload. It's just going to bring up your folder. You can choose whatever you want. And then it's going to upload it straight to Google Drive for you. Okay. So all I did is I clicked on new file upload. It brings up the file loader just like it would for anything else. You select your item, you hit open and Google automatically uploads it for you. Okay. So you can choose the same thing with a folder. Then I'm going to talk about Google Docs, but you can create a Google Doc. Jennifer is going to tell us a little bit about Sheets when she talks about forms. So there's a, a sheet. And, and for people who haven't used Google, Google Docs is basically equivalent to Microsoft Word. I'm not saying it's exact same because it's not, but it, it's the equivalent to it. So, and then same with Sheets. Sheets is equivalent to Excel. Google Slides is equivalent to PowerPoint. Um, I don't know if there is an equivalent for forms, honestly. Uh, in Microsoft, there is Jennifer. Give tell me what it is. I'm not sure. Is it like Access or something? I don't know. It's actually Microsoft <laughs> Forms. Oh, but, but Google was first. Sort okay. of. Okay. Okay. I got educated today. Um, so then there's an, a drawing program within it. Um, a map, maps is built in, and then sites is so that you can create your own um, websites. And I've done that for several projects where you make your own website within Google. So there's lots of different features and, and um, programs that's built right into Google itself that are free and already you have access to, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Google Docs and then when you click on it, it automatically creates a brand new document for you, okay? And you can see it's got a lot of the same functionality at the top here, just like I said in a Word document does. Not 100%, you know, where it has a lot of those ribbons at the top and a lot of different things, but a lot of your basic editing that you're gonna to wanna to do <clears throat> and to be able to collaborate with, you can do. So if you want to title this, all you have to do is go to the top where it says Untitled Document. You click on it and I'm gonna title it Rainy Day. Okay, so that's all I have to do is uh, click on it. So I clicked on it, typed in it, and then I clicked off of it, and Google saves it automatically for you. And so that is nice to know too that when you when you do things, um, as as you are typing, it automatically saves for you. It says last edit was seconds ago, and it will continue to update and save for you. I've got another document open that I'm going to show you how the collaboration part works. But for this, um, I mean, you can make things bold. You can underline, you can highlight. Um, so you can do any of those things. Um, I don't have any, well, maybe I do. So you can, um, you can upload an image from the computer. You can upload an image from your drive, which is I just showed you how to do that. Um, you can upload a photo from Google Photos. So I'm gonna upload this. There is our Ask the Experts logo. And all I did is I went to the picture 
I hit upload from computer, found the, the item I needed, and then it inserted it, okay? And it looks like it highlighted yellow because I had the yellow highlights still on. Um, but so there's lots of different things that you can do. You can centerize your documents. Um, I could make a list and I can just kind of type out all the different steps for this. So it's, it's, really, it's really neat to be able to do that. Um, it also shows you your history. Um, so you could go file and version history. So maybe, maybe you like screwed up and it saved it and you really don't want it to. You can see the version history and you can go back to the, the version that you had earlier. Um, like you can restore, oh, this is when I had nothing on it or the one that I have currently. And so you can restore that. So if you make a huge mistake and you're like, oh no, what did I do? You have an option to go in and find your version history and, and change that, okay? So as for the collaboration piece, um, we have a document here that is in my drive. We just called it test document. I already have it open, so I'm just gonna click on it. And in this document, um, Michelle's in it and Jennifer and I are all in it. And so we can um, work together. And you can tell that we're all in it because our names are all on the document. And um, all of us can type at the same time. And so um, as a team, we can go in and we can work on a, um, a, a document together. So we can look at the same document. We can make real-time changes. We don't need to email it back and forth to each other. We, as I said, we can see the exact same thing. Um, they're showing you how you can make things fancy. You can change the size. You can change the color. Um, so any, any of that kind of stuff, you're, you're welcome to do. Um, but the, the cool thing is, as I said, you can, you can still see the versions and you can work on it at the, um, at the same exact time. And so everyone can give their input without having to email things back and forth and, and uh, waste time in between all of that. Um, yeah, real time collaboration. So does anybody have any questions? That's kind of the general overview. Oh, I forgot the sharing of um, a document as well. I showed you how you can share a folder and that was clicking on the folder and hitting share. Um, how we shared this, is there a share button in the upper right hand corner? And all I did is a blue share button. Um, it's already shared with Michelle, so I'm gonna share it with somebody else in my staff. Um, he's gonna be like, what? But he knew we were doing this today, so it's all good. Okay, um, and so I'll, I just click on the blue share button. I added in his email address. And then once his email is in, I just hit um, share. Now, if you don't have their email address or you wanna share it in a different way, you can get the link um, and you can copy the link to that document. Um, and then you can put it in a text message. You can put it in directly into an email instead of them getting an email invitation, it will go in a separate email. So you can do it that way. Um, I have shared several things both of those ways both by copying the link and sending it directly to people, like I said, in a text message or in an email. Um, those are helpful. And then it's also good to know like what the rights are as you're sharing things. So if you want people to be able to um, work on it with you, they do need to be editors. But maybe you don't want them to make changes and you just want them to be able to see items, then you can just make them a viewer or a commenter. The viewer is they literally can see it the commenter means that they can like go in and add comments to what you're saying, but they can't make actual um, changes. So, and then if you need to remove somebody, you're welcome to remove them as well. So all of those are, are options and things to note as well. Um, it looks like Cody did join and he even wrote in our document as well. So that is, is um, the general overview. Um, ladies, do you, can you think of anything else that we should add in regards to Drive or Docs themselves? Um, yeah, this last one would like to hear about multiple logins. Okay, in Google itself, like so that you can have more than one. Um, yeah, you what, you mentioned early on about yeah. um, dual logins, and and I'm playing with an approach that I'm using, but I'm curious to hear from you because I'm wondering if I'm doing it the right way. Um, basically, what I do is I can like I'm currently logged into my marketing account, and then I'm also logged into my um, tech lab account and so I just Google now makes it so you can log into more than one account at a time 
And then all you do is you go to the person in the corner and you would switch between them. Um, I'm not going to do that in this screen because <laughs> uh, I'm going to lose this document in this drive, but you just switch between them now. Um, I, I highlighted that just because I want to say a year, maybe two years ago, that was no, not an option for Google. If I wanted to be in, um, if I wanted to be in one account, I could only be in that account at a time. And then I had to sign out and then I had to sign in with the other account. So I'm not sure how many you can be in at once. It's for sure two or three. Um, but just know that that's an option and you just click on the person. Um, also note on that, um, there is a default account. And so once you have your default account set, you can change it. Um, it just know that that's the one that's automatically going to sign in first with everything. And so just note that as well, especially if you're logging into different programs, but you need a different account. Um, just kind of take note of which one's your default. And if you need help changing it, um, I just helped a client the other day um, change their default account because it just wasn't right and they're getting frustrated. So we're happy to help you with that and work with that. But yeah, know that you can have multiple accounts signed in now. Um, and yeah, the reason I mentioned that is it wasn't always the case. Go ahead, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Well, so one other thing that comes up is when do we share a folder versus a document, like a folder versus a file? And in general, my rule of thumb, so I'd love to get your input on this too, if it's going to be multiple things that I'm working on with a person, I create a folder and then I just share the folder and assume that they're going to have access to everything in there. Like that's by the default. If I'm just doing one thing like this test document that we were just floating around, that just was a quick document share and it just got shared with that. But you know, when you think about keeping your stuff clean and I'm curious if you guys have had issues with this, if I had a shared file in my, without it, without it being in a folder, and then I'm like, oh, I don't want it cluttering out here anymore. I'm going to move it to another folder that's not shared. I think that messes with your sharing permissions. I think you'd be correct if you're going to move it like that, because just, just like in a regular computer, it, it follows the path that it was originally saved. Um, so when that path has changed, then it would mess with the sharing permissions. I mean, you can have um, individual folders that don't have the same sharing settings as the um, parent, or as the parent, um, but you have to manually change that. So if you do that, I would definitely check, take a look and see what the sharing settings are after you move it. Just something to think about when you're when you're getting this stuff set up. I mean, if I, even when we started the Ask the Experts, we we're doing everything in our Google stuff. But we just created an Ask the Experts folder and then know that all of us have, have access to the stuff in there. And it makes it so much easier than wondering, ooh, do they have permission? What level of permission do they have? Things like that. Um, go ahead. So Kathy is wondering if um, it shares folders and updates with others, does it send you a notice that someone has added to it? Um, and as far as I know, it only shows, sends you an email when someone has directly shared it with you. So everything, when it, things are added to the folder and you wouldn't necessarily know unless they told you. Ooh, I did just find something though. The glory of the Google is that you can actually go to the notifications menu and choose the option to be notified by email whenever a change is made to one of your files in Google Drive. Hmm. Um, but I would double check on that. It's not, it is not a common feature and it, I mean, I play with it just a little bit, but I think it's possible. The other thing that might be possible if it's not possible doing this is to use a feature like, um, Zapier or if this, then that, and, um, I'll post that in the chat, like what those are called again, um, Zapier and if this, then if this than that. Those are both um, tools that when something is done in one program, something happens in another program. So Irene has a question about Google Drive being an additional app. And I think you want to try and take that, Amanda, and explain that the easiest way? Um, can you read me a question? I can't get my chat up. No problem. Is Google Drive an additional app? You know, knowing that we have Google, like just the Google, 
and the Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if that's for if that's for question, then um, it's built into your browser, Irene. So what that means is you can go directly into Chrome. I don't know if you can see that on my on my screen, but it's that circle on the bottom, and then you can click on that. And then once you're in your browser, then you can click on the icons on the right, the three dot, or the nine dots, and then click on drive. And so it's an app within your browser in Chrome, um, but you should be able to load it in other browsers as well. So you can go to your Internet Explorer and pull up Google Drive um, just as easily. So I can, you can't, this is on a different screen on my computer, so you can't see it. Um, but if I go to like Bing and I pull that up, I can click on Google Drive. I type in Google Drive and I can go right to Google Drive. Um, so it's an app within the browser itself. So you download it, then download Google Drive. You don't, you don't even need to download it because it's built right into um, the computer. But if you're talking about on your phone or on your tablet, then yes, those would be separate um, apps that you would download onto your phone or onto your tablet if you want to be able to access them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? I want Jennifer to have time for forms too. Any other suggestions on, we have talked about sharing documents. Yep. Um, but a lot of times instead of sharing, I would rather just, um, email somebody a copy of that Google document or sheet. Um, and usually it wants you to send a link to where it is within Google. I Sometimes I'll need to download that to my device and then when I go to send my email, attach it that way. I didn't know if there were any hints or tips on attaching a document when you're emailing instead of linking to the Google Drive location? Um, it is all within Google. So the document itself is a Google Doc that you created that's in right. your drive. Is that correct? Right. Okay. But I, let's say I don't want to give them a link to my Google Drive. I right. would rather right. just send them the document. We're not going to collaborate on it. It's, maybe it's a final deliverable and I just want to have them have a copy of it and not have to access my drive. Um, that so, just hasn't been very clean. One, one thought is you can just make them a viewer, but I think you're more concerned about them having, like you're thinking they have access to your drive itself. Is that well, right? I, I know I can set the permission so they would not be able to access it, but you know, like you normally can do in Microsoft, you can just attach a document, not insert a link to a document. And right, you're shaking your head, Jennifer, and right, I'm finding that that's just not the Google way, it seems. Exactly. It's, it's really designed for that same time, real time online collaboration. Yep. And their least preferred method of delivering stuff is through a download. Yep. So, um, so, Amanda, that being said, though, can you open up that document again? Yep. Um, well, that's not what I want. Sorry. Yep. Cause I, okay, go to file. And they can download it. Files, uh, it as a email word. is attached. Save it as a document. Oh, right. No, email is attachment right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so then, then you, you would type in the email. I just did this. Um, and what right. it did is it presented me with a PDF. So I can't edit it, right. but it did save it as a PDF. It's not, a, this is one way to do it. Got yeah, got see, it. there you go. There are some other options of first saving it. Right, right, right. That'd probably be the cleanest way and the easiest way. Like you said, if you know that you don't want them to collaborate, um, then you can just email it direct them directly. And so Michelle said file, email yeah. as attachment, and then you can do it that way. Thanks That's for that reminder, Michelle. I'll have to look at the other file types. I'm not sure if I've seen that capability and everything, but thank you for that. I think it would be different. You would, if you are in um, Google Sheets, it would probably show up I think it would show up differently. Right. Because, uh, yeah, well, rich text is for documents. And Amanda, I have a question that actually spins off of Liz's question. When you want to attach a file, the bigger ones, like a video, they sometimes won't go through. They're too big. Right. So 
I found if I have a video or a big PowerPoint, I really need to share it with a Google Drive link. Yeah. Just to simply send it. Yeah, I would agree. Either that or compress that yourself ahead of time and then send it. Um, or Google, YouTube is technically owned by Google as well. And so that's okay. kind of a great video sharing um, platform and has been even more beneficial and popular these, especially during this time period we're in. So that's another way to do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, I think we're gonna turn it over to Jennifer. Let's shift gears, kids. I'm gonna Let's stop my share. Fun stuff. I mean, you know, this is the place where cool nerds come to hang out and I'm glad to see all of us here. So thank you. And so we're gonna talk for a minute about forms. And part of it is because I see, let me, let me talk about how this solves a couple problems for me. One, if I'm doing Zoom stuff, if I wanted to get some immediate reactions to things, the fastest place to do that for me is actually using either Microsoft Forms or Google Forms. And Google Forms just has a really smooth and easy platform. And you know I hate to say things like this, but at this point, Microsoft Forms is a, or I'm sorry, Google Forms is a better option than Microsoft Forms. Shh. Right, so here's the deal. When you're in your drive, one option is to go to new. You don't necessarily see it by default, but if you go to more, you're gonna to go to Google Forms. So Google Forms, so let me give you a couple examples of what that interface actually looks like, because it's name your form, and when you put your name here, it automatically changes the file name to be that new name. So those sync up. And right now it's saved by default in wherever I was when I created it. So you can add a description to the form. And now you can start adding your questions and they're super easy to add. And so for example, if I wanted to find out when we all wanna to go to happy hour and I want that to be a date option, I'm gonna make sure to change this. I think this might be in my way, hold on. I'm gonna make sure to change this to a date format because that brings up my calendar picker in the answers, okay? Now, if I wanted to duplicate the question, this is my duplicate option, this is delete, and this is where you make it required. Here's one thing I will tell you, in general, in surveys, I know we all want everybody to answer every single question because all that data is awesome and important and beautiful. I will also tell you, I, I, I wanna see a raise of hands on this. Have you ever stopped taking a survey because they required you to answer a question that you did not want to answer? Yep. And so you've just lost a whole lot of data. So don't do that. Don't, if yeah. you have to make something okay. required, go ahead and do that. But if you don't, don't, okay? Next, over here is where you can add more questions. So we might wanna add like your name. Okay, cool. So name automatically defaulted to short answer and I might make that required, we'll see. Maybe the name isn't as required as the email address. But you can see really quickly if I wanted another short text answer that I can just, again, use that duplicate button. So this is something where you guys should just go around and play with it, right? But we have, here are your options, short text or long text, which they call paragraph. Multiple choice, which is always gonna be the round buttons is always multiple choice. The check boxes are going to be, um, you can select more than one. So in general, just so you know from a survey format, if it's a circle, you can only pick one. And if it's a box, you should be able to pick more than one. That's just been a newer standard that's come in. We have a drop down. You have the ability to do file uploads in here. So for one of the organizations where we source um, a group for speakers, we used to chase them down and say, we need your bio, we need your email and all your contact information, we need your headshot, we need your this, we need your, no, no more. Because what's easy is if I just send them the link, they send it all in one thing. And that way, all of the stuff is contained in one place and I just go to it when, it's, when I'm ready for it. And if they haven't, they don't get to speak, but that's just you know my policy. 
you can have linear scales and grids and I'll show you some examples of that as well. So these are all the different types of stuff you can have in a form. And I'm actually going to remove the date, get rid of that real quick. And I'm gonna copy this, well, I'll share this with you first. So hold on, before I go to all the other stuff, cause I want you guys to see how the results come in. You can make them pretty, but not beautiful. Pretty, but not beautiful. And here's what I mean by that. You can have some images come in and choose your header images. You can change the theme color just a little bit, but this is not gonna be like that gorgeous, you know, um, website type design. This is still a little bit clunky on that. It's function, not as much as form. Um, this is where you can preview. And, oh, what does it look like? Yay, oh, that looks good. Okay, that's a preview. And here are some of your settings. Now, here's pro tip. Pro tip has to go with collecting email addresses. You will likely not know if your email address is being collected. So when someone says they're doing an anonymous survey, you may not, it may not be truly anonymous. And that is one of the reasons why I prefer Google Forms over Microsoft Forms because Microsoft Forms does not allow purely anonymous surveys. In their current setup, they will always be collecting the email addresses. So if I check this, you can also have like response receipts and things like that. And if we say limit to only one response, guess what? That's how you know that it's not anonymous at that point. So if you come in and take the survey and you know don't answer all the questions or whatever, and then try and go back in, you'll know that they've collected your email address. The only way it's like stuffing the ballot box of sorts. The only way that we know if you've taken it is if this is checked. So I also say when I'm administering a survey, um, I can't send you a reminder if you didn't take it because I'm not, co I'm not coordinating that with my list. I'm sending it out once, you know, and I'll send a reminder out to everybody, but this reminder doesn't indicate whether you've taken it or not. Because it's anonymous, I can't tell. Can I just get some head nods if that concept makes sense to you guys about like the anonymous or not? Okay, you also have the ability to have um, edit after submit or you can share the results. So these forms can also be used, like you can have a progress bar, you can shuffle questions if it's used for a quiz. And you can actually turn these into quizzes and have them graded. So if you're picking like option one, two, and three, or yeah, thank you, Amanda. So you can actually say like, what's the right answer? Um, and we've seen that in some of those. So back to Zoom. In Zoom, if I wanted to create a quick poll, like right now, Amanda and Michelle are co-hosts on this meeting. The only person, they could both launch a poll that I created but they couldn't actually create a poll off the cuff and launch it right now because that's in the back end account. But either one of those could go out and launch a, a Google form as a poll and ask all sorts of questions on there. So I think that these provide a lot of agility for us. So there's two different ways that you can be collaborating here. So when I hit send, when I hit send, this is actually sending the form to be collected, right? So again, it still says, hey, do you want to collect those email addresses? You can send them directly to people or most of the time what I do is I use the link and I shorten the link real quick and I'm going to pop that in chat so you can see that. And now I'm just asking you your name and your favorite drink. So if you want to go ahead and take that while I keep going, you can do that and we'll see the results. So if in here though, I wanted to say, hey, um, Michelle and Amanda, I need you guys to actually look at this survey before I send it out to people. I add them as collaborators, which is a different, that, that's more like the traditional sharing that you saw before when Amanda did her demo. And so they can actually um, open the link. You can have them, um, you know, anybody, I usually have it, anybody with the link can and do whatever they need to do. 
but that's how you can share this for people to actually edit the form itself versus take the form. Are we good on that? Get, it, get some head, head nods on the difference. All right, so just wanna show you a couple other examples. So we actually put an Ask the Texperts form out um, when we started doing these because we were looking for um, topics and suggestions. So we just had, um, what questions do you have for Tech Lab? What questions do you have for Excel and Flourish? And the name, which was optional company, and we did have their email address required because they were being notified of upcoming episodes and they were notified of when their question would be included in the show. So in this particular case, we were very clear of how their email would be used and they knew that they were putting it in there. So the, again, from an ethical data collection standpoint, that's one of the things that I prefer to include. Okay, the next one I have is an example of um, our training survey. So when somebody goes to take a training survey, it's, you know, what was the date of your training? Who was your trainer? How much time are you going to save? So um, you'll see a rating scale in there. Now, what starts to happen is once we've done that, you start to see your responses come in. And so the responses, just show like I have 24 responses here, and you can get those responses in either a summary, so this starts to look like a dashboard, ooh la la, dashboard with all of the data. But what makes it even more fun is when we have it turn into a spreadsheet. So this is Google Sheets, and these are all of the answers that now I could extract and do fun things with. We're gonna go back to your happy hour survey real quick, and then we're gonna get it ready to open up for questions. So again, you guys saw how we went from just the blank form, added a couple questions. Now we have six responses. I can go look at these. This is the summary, okay? This, I can look at it by question. I can look at it by individual. And I can come over here and get a spreadsheet. And now we have our quick spreadsheet with the data. So the last thing to share with you guys on forms before we go too far is early on in COVID-19, I partnered with an organization and we created a COVID-19 workforce impact assessment. And this got really complex because if they answered employed for wages or self-employed, like if they answered some of these questions, it would actually take them to different questions in the survey. So this is probably one of the more advanced surveys that I put together that had different sections. It had different conditions for when to move to different sections. Um, and the spreadsheet that came out of it is ugly. It's stupid ugly because it doesn't summarize in a way that I think makes meaning of all the data. So then I imported it into uh, Excel using Power Query and it got all better. So. Those are just a couple pieces, again, of what we can do in forms, but I will tell you, it's so super fast and super easy. I even will make them on my phone when I'm at an event and be like, hey, you guys, quick, you know, go do this form because it's the fast way to gather data and you have an output that now I can say like, oh, tea is the drink of choice. Therefore, we're gonna at least have some tea at our next event. Questions? I just wanted to add too that you can also add in videos in your forms and you can add in pictures. Um, Jennifer was showing you some of the different responses and then if you want to add like pictures to individual responses, that is also a fun or popular thing to do and just know that that is available to, for you as well if you feel like getting fancy in your forms. I'm not, are you saying like, an excellent job, but. Upload videos? I don't even know what we're talking about, Amanda. Teach me. <laughs> sure. Um, so you go back to your questions and, and edit your, like go to your happy hour. Yep. And then add a new question. <gasps> and there's add video. And so you can add videos directly in. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a pretty popular thing that's happening for people. They can they can add their YouTube links right there directly into the forms. Um, and then, as I said too, if you're gonna do like a multiple choice, 
but you want, maybe you want one thing to have like picture A and then picture B and then pi you can add pictures to individual responses. So that's awesome. something else to know that you can, that you can do. Yeah, that's a lot fancier than what I would do. I love that you know the fancy stuff. All right. So again, our goal today was to make sure that you guys got a taste of some of what's possible in the collaboration side of the Google stuff. Um, this is now also probably a good time for you to either ask questions to any of us um, about what we've covered. And we're also open to suggestions about our topics for next time. I've got a question. When you were talking about uh, collecting emails, Okay, uh, my professional organization, AHIMA, which is American Health Information Organization in Chicago, when I retired my credentials, um, they told me I was required to put behind my name, uh, retired in parentheses. Okay, now I'm getting emails from <laughs> other sources that are saying, Irene, retired garrison. They use retired as my last name. Uh, I'm just, what can I do about this? Nothing? They must have, I don't know, I guess they, you know, get that information wherever it goes. It goes out there into the world. I don't know what's happened. I think you'd have to talk to them uh, directly. It sounds like they copy that username when they send out your emails. Um, and so even though that's how it appears on the website, they somehow incorporated that into like your email address. So I think you'd have to contact them because it sounds like something's kind of uh, crossed in there. I will surely contact them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just, just one other quick question because I'm taking a course at a university and in this class we're take, using VoiceThread. Has anybody ever heard of VoiceThread? I feel like I've heard of it, but I'm not sure what it does. Because I couldn't get editing rights for it. Maybe it was something I did when I um, first tried to access it. I think it told me to connect to Google or something. I didn't do that. But I had to create my own voice thread instead of using the one that was assigned to me. So I just wanted, because I've asked three or four tech experts that I know, and None of them had heard a voice thread except our professor, apparently, and she's using it in the class. So I just wondered if you knew anything about voice thread. No, but now we're going to probably have to look at it because we're nerds and that's what we do. Okay. Oh, bummer. Um, yeah, we'll take a look. Oh. Go ahead. I just have a quick question. How secure are the Google Forms like for providing, and since you know what I do, um, confidential information? I would not be collecting credit card, social security number, or even passport information over it. Okay. I just wouldn't. Um, Got it. So here's- I wasn't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think it's really hackable. But don't take my word for that. And when we get into, when we Jennifer talk about said, like, just right, 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 right. Thank you. Cause we're recorded right now, Missy. I caught that. So <laughs> we'll see like if, if, if we were talking about things around security, Microsoft is going to beat Google. It, uh. it just has to. So, um, I'm not saying that Google is not secure. I think they do a lot of good things, but I would, I would not feel, there's even been times where I think I've been asked for some of that stuff in a Google form and I'm like, oh, absolutely not. I will not put that in there myself. No, okay. Good question though, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I was even thinking, now that you're thinking about it, um, there's times when I've traveled with a group and we've needed to collect like their passport images right? Like a, scan your passport because we need that for so many different things. And, and a travel agent that would certainly make things easier. I would um, be having them putting that stuff in, in Dropbox or something other than. Exactly. Yeah, I do too. But although when they only send me the cover of the passport instead of the inside, it really doesn't matter. That's an opportunity for training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Although funny. it is hard to tell who's is who's. Right. I love it. We could leverage um, the embedded video to show them exactly what to do. 
Right? Because they'll watch the video, right? Yeah, for sure. They won't read the message. Open your passport. Follow along with me. So good. I love it. The life Any other questions religious. today, you guys? Silence. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that you found most interesting and valuable? I did not know how easy Google Forms was. Yeah. I didn't Absolutely. really know about it at all, so. Yeah. I didn't either. And, you know, there's all these Zoom trivia groups. Instead of doing a PowerPoint, which is far more labor intensive, you could really do a Google Forms version of the trivia game. Yes, it's probably not going to be as pretty, well, unless right. we're using right. some of the imagery and stuff that Amanda was suggesting. Um, it just other uses came to mind. It was very interesting. Didn't know about it. Yeah. I, I, I am kind of of the mindset that if I'm going to be collecting data over a longer period of time, like every time I have a speaker come in, or if I'm going to be collecting data that I might want to do other analysis with, I definitely want to have that in a Google form because I want, I want the spreadsheet afterwards. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. The idea of leveraging the flexibility and speed to create that's I, well, and, and even, you know, when a host is hosting, yeah. when the person who sets stuff up, when they're hosting, you're stuck. Right. Like I tried, you asked me one time when we were on a call with Pat to create yep. a quick poll, and I couldn't do it. Right. Even it. though I was technically the host, I right. can't get into the back end to do it. Right. So, so you, you flip, I think you did it that time. I think you flipped over Google Forms, created on the fly, dropped the short link and we're go. And yep. then you share your screen. You get to see the results and the responses, pretty graphs if needed. Yeah. There's a lot of options. And I don't know. I, I knew there were images dropped in, but Amanda, I didn't know about video and I'm seeing, I'm already starting to spin up. Okay. What other, what use cases does that create? Yeah, I'm actually thinking of a lead gen opportunity to say like, hey, you're interested in working with me? Well, here's a minute to hear a little bit about what I'm about. If now that you've heard oh, that you want to do something with me, fill out the form. Calendly, kick it over to your scheduler. Yes. Um, we've, I actually use, just as another good thing to get people thinking, I actually use Google Forms internally for me to fill out a spreadsheet. So it's faster on mobile for me to fill out the forms in a, in a Google form to add a new row to a spreadsheet that I'm tracking something with. So I do it when I'm at an event and I want to add that event to my list of events for later, you know, sales campaigns. And that way I also can limit what I enter in each field, which makes me faster, right? Then my drop downs are built in. It's really mobile friendly, a little more mobile friendly than a, than a spreadsheet would be. So I actually created my own little mini process to help me keep track of those things using forms and sheets. So could you do the same thing for like lead generation too, or like even people you meet at an event, you could, you know, type in Michael Rampola, Siri, and then. Boom, boom, boom. And now, yeah, yeah. And we use, we use a different process for that, but absolutely I could, that could be, that form could be how I add leads. Even if I just had business cards, like if I got my stack of business cards, there's an upload in there. The last thing in there is upload an image, but the first part is the whole, like type in the information from the card. If you don't have a scanner that already does that for you, that could fill in the fields in a Google sheet that now you've ready to upload to somewhere else. Like you saw, it's pretty fast to do that than like clicking through a spreadsheet and doing it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, so Forms is super mobile friendly and I've, yes. like I said, discovered it as a good front end for a good mobile front end to data entry on a Google sheet. That yes. makes sense. Great idea. No, oh, sharing that as a use case. Well, um, and, then, and just, yeah. Go ahead. One little tiny thing. If you get into it, if you create a long form, um, I once create used images to create a progress. Like there's a progress tracker at the bottom, but we were trying to be cute with it. So we actually like had, a, I don't remember what it was, some little character moving across the scene. That was the header image on every page just to kind of keep engagement going up. So those images can be functional in multiple different ways. You can yep. be selecting images as choices, but they can also be inline ways to add imagery to, further pretty your form if you as, as an idea further well, pretty further, further pretty, pretty. More, more pretty yeah. prettier prettier prettierish. Prettier yeah. yes well and then the other thing that i will say the reason why we went with that tool for the COVID assessment is one it was anonymous we were able to make sure of that 
But two, we didn't know what response rates were going to be. And we checked out so many of the different tools. And, you know, for the free version, which does have some limited, you know, um, tracking with the questions, they were like limiting us to 100 responses or 50 responses. I'm like, I don't know how many responses we're going to get. And I don't want that to be our limitation. Like if we're getting a ton of responses, we need them. So it's, it's been an interesting um, journey, but I think that's also part of it, you guys, is like, what are the use cases that you're finding for stuff? And, you know, please feel free on future events, because I know many of you return to these calls frequently, um, share like what you learned and, and how you're using it and how it's going to simplify your life. I think we're probably about ready to wrap up. I'll put the screen up with the last, um, with our PowerPoint slides, with the last parts of today. And there we go. So of course you guys know who we are at this point and where to find us. And if you ever need us, you know, please reach out and we can put you in touch with one or the other. Um, Tech Lab is more of the hardware and all the, the nuts and bolts of that good behind the scenes stuff. You've seen their antivirus, you've seen their backups, and I am the nerd on the software side. So, the cool um, nerd. Well, you know, it, it, nerd is what, uh, you know, just like your husband, Sarah, you know, any of us who love Excel, we're all cellmates of sorts. Yes. And, um, Please feel free to join us. We're back again in two weeks for our show at two o'clock again, same link. And I did hear uh, a couple issues with the, with the uh, password. So we'll double check on that and make sure that we've got that. And Michelle just dropped the link of where our previous sessions are housed. So you're always welcome to go back to that stuff. And if you have certain questions or just want to get on the list, our links, um, we can drop those as well. Otherwise, thanks you guys. Thanks, Thanks ladies.